Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez, and welcome to video two in our Scanda 3D part design series. Now, we talked a little bit about the series and the goal of the series, and also some of the tools you have available to you in Scanda 3D. So now we want to take the mesh file we have on the screen and start modifying it so we can eventually end up with a surface to start designing our part. The file that we have on the screen has a lot of scan information. There's a lot of data that we don't need here for our specific part. The end goal for this series is to actually take a small section of this part and design a part that's going to be 3D printed that will double-sided tape stick to this. So it's very important that we have good information, good scan information, and also that we don't bring in too much information. We don't want to have a large file size. We don't want this thing to take forever to crank away and create the end result mesh that we want. So it's very important that we focus on one area of this scan so that we don't waste a lot of time. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this area right here. It looks like it's got a good clean scan, good clean information that we can then use to create our 3D part. So let's get started by selecting Mesh Prep Wizard and then selecting, in this case, the only mesh we have in this file. So you'll notice that we have a little dialog here that says number of faces and it gives you a number. So this is an important value here because it's dealing with the number of polygon faces that are used to create this mesh. Now if you're dealing with a point cloud file, it's going to give you basically the number of points. But both of these are important because it gives you a good idea, a good understanding of the file size you're dealing with. And, and not just that, but how you can actually go about simplifying it, but still keeping the important information. The first box or the first dialog that we come to is the orientation of our mesh. Now, right now, you can see, based on our coordinate system, this thing is just kind of skewed out in space. Now, this is a common problem when you're dealing with scan data within the scan to 3D environment inside SOLIDWORKS. So it's very important, especially when we go to design our 3D parts, that we have a good understanding of the orientation of the part within our coordinate system. Now, one thing you'll notice is when this thing was scanned, there's actually a surface down here, or a plane that this thing was resting on. Whenever you're scanning this information, it's always a good idea to put some sort of reference in the scan file, whether it's some sort of block where you can have good corner references to select for your coordinate system, or in this case, we have some sort of plane at the bottom, which will give us a good reference for, in this case, X and Y, and it'll automatically orient our Z. So I'm going to use the selected reference option, and we're going to select an origin. Now, in this case, I'm going to select my origin down here on our part, and then I want to select my X direction, just a point over here, and then my Y direction as a point. Now, of course, there's going to be a little bit of deviation here, but it's going to do its best to average between these. So in this case, there's a lot of extraneous information that we don't need. So having a, a good smaller reference that had clean edges on it would be a much better idea for this type of file, for this large of a part. So in this case, you can see in the bottom corner, we have our X and Y, and Z is automatically pointing up, so we don't need to select a reference for that. But if we want to, we can reverse these directions as well. So you can see that's flipping the part over. So for us, now that we've oriented that, we're going to have a good orientation for designing our part. We can go to the next section. Now the next section is a noise removal. This is a very interesting section. The noise removal is basically information that is floating out in space, for lack of a better term. So for instance, we have a couple little pieces that are kind of floating down here and then this plane. Now we can remove noise by area. So if the area of this large piece down here or, or these smaller pieces is a good bit different than the main piece we're working with, we can have that removed. So if I just grab this slider bar, if I drag it all the way to the right, look at the preview on the screen, we can see what's going to be removed from the graphics window. So you can see by turning the remove noise slider all the way up, it's taken anything that was below the main part of our mesh. It's not 100% guaranteed that it'll always clear out all that information, especially if the volume, the size of the information around the part is close to or larger than the size of the main mesh you want to deal with. A little word of caution there, be careful that you don't remove anything that you still need. But for us, since we're only dealing with this small area, it was good to, to get rid of any information that saved us the time of uh, actually deleting it. Another note, 
because we are dealing with the small area. When you drag the slider bar all the way to the side, I actually paused the video and allowed it to delete everything. It's not instantaneous. It does have to gather the information. And when we're dealing with over 1 million polygons, essentially, a fairly large mesh size, then it does take quite a bit of time in, in order to remove that. So it might be quicker in a lot of cases to delete it, but if it's really messy, if it's really unclear, and you need to keep a lot of your border, a lot of that information along the sides, then allowing SOLIDWORKS to do it by using this remove noise slider can be a great option. So now let's take a look at the next section. And this section has to deal with the extraneous data removal. Everything kind of falls in line. We allow SOLIDWORKS to take care of any of that noise reduction first, and then we can manually select areas that we want to delete. So for us, let's just rotate the part around. And again, we're really only focusing in this area. There are two things that we need to note here. Now, when we're going to be dealing with creating surfaces, as I mentioned in the first video, there are two main types. There is an automatic creation and a guided creation. Now the automatic creation is going to do a great job in creating this area here. The guided creation is going to be quite a bit more work in order to get that. So we need to be real careful and make sure that we save what we want, the information that we need, and that we don't have a lot of extra information. But we also need to make sure that the quality of what we have here is very good. So we're going to start by using the polygon selection tool. And I'm going to start by simply removing all this top information. Now, I need to make sure that I keep enough information there to use so that I, that I make sure I have some overlap, some extra area. Now, once that is turned green, I can go ahead and select Delete. Next, I'm going to use that same polygon tool, and I'm simply going to drag it down and remove all this information here on the left-hand side. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to remove all this information over here on the right-hand side. Now we have to determine how much information we want below this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave all of this information here. And the reason I'm going to do that is because it'll allow us to take a look at creating surface for this entire edge here. So all this information here, but it'll also allow us to take a look at creating a surface for this area here. So now that I've removed all the information, I can go to our next section, which is going to deal with simplification. Now, one quick note, simplification is different than smoothing. When you're dealing with simplification, you're simply reducing the mesh size. The, the current mesh size in this case is 194,387. By reducing that mesh size, what we're doing is we're actually removing information. Now, because we are dealing with curvature here, especially in this area where we have a lot of changes in curvature in a small area, by reducing that size, by reducing the amount, we are going to be losing information. Now, I'm going to drag the slider bar to the right just to take a look at what happens. So as I drag it to the right, information is removed, and we get a smaller mesh size. Now, if I drag it farther to the right to do a much greater percentage of reduction, we're going to get an even worse result. So you can see when we zoom in that things start to get really bad here. Uh, they start to get really bumpy. And the farther we go, the more information we're going to lose. Now, it's very, very, very important. Now, it's three very, so it's very important that you don't drag the slider all the way to the right and then hit next. Because once you do, you're not going to be able to come back and change that amount. So let's say that we reduce this 10%. And then we went on to the next step, which is smoothing. Well, if we decided that we, we messed up, we took too much information, we wanted to go back, we're not going to be able to increase the target mesh size. So right now it's at 194,000. If we reduce it to 180,000, we decide that that's too much. We're not going to be able to go back once we exit this simplification step. Again, very important, don't do too much. It's much better to leave the slider all the way to the left, go to smoothing, decide that you need some simplification and come back. That way you don't end up creating a, a situation where you have to start all over again. So now we're going to go to the next step, which is smoothing. Now the mesh simplification is basically, as I mentioned, dealing with reducing the size of the mesh. So if this part was made up of, let's just say 10 polygons, if we reduced it by 50% down to five, that means that a lot of this curvature is going to have to be simplified. So it's going to reduce information. It's going to take away some geometry. We're going to lose some sort of information. When you deal with smoothing, basically if you think of a sine curve where you have half of the sine curve is below zero. So we, let's say we're going from negative one to positive one. Half of that sine curve is negative one. The other half is at positive one. If we do a 50% simplification, 
now we're at negative 0.5 and positive 0.5 so we haven't smoothed it out completely, but we're reducing the height of each set of the curve. So there is a norm, and anything that's below or above is, is going to get averaged, basically. Now, if we do more smoothing, if we, if we get more aggressive with it, it'll try to pull it all in closer together. So let's go ahead and just rotate this around so we can get a good view of kind of what the surface texture looks like right now. And then I'm going to take this global slider, and I'm just going to go somewhere in the middle and then as you can see it, it kind of looks a little bit blurrier but as you can see things are smoothing out now if I drag it farther to the right it's gonna get even more smooth and if I go all the way to the right it gets a little bit more aggressive with it so it's basically taking everything all that information and as I said any low spots it's bringing up and any high spots it's bringing down and it's still retaining the information in the corners. So we haven't lost any geometry. Now, of course, in the corners where there is you know, a sharp edge, we do have the potential to lose some information. But for the most part, all the information is still there. We're just removing some of that frequency that was added by the scanning process. So that looks pretty good. And then we have a slider bar at the bottom that allows us to do boundary. So we can basically we can smooth out the boundary as much as possible now we still have some information at the bottom that we probably should have removed but we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this and see how it affects the surface creation process now we also have the option to do local smoothness uh, let's say we needed a little bit better resolution in the area here so we could take our lasso tool and we could simply draw around this and in these areas we could simply apply a local smoothness value to get a little bit better resolution so now that we've taken care of all of the global smoothing and all of the local smoothing, crank it all the way up, and we can go to the next section. Now the next section is holes to fill. Now in this case, we don't have any holes. Uh, there was a single hole in the mesh in the top left corner, but we removed it because we didn't need that information. But when you're filling these holes, it's all done automatically. There's going to be a dialog box that lists all the holes that it finds within your mesh. And it's important to note that the holes get filled by using some sort of equal curvature, some tangency relations with the surrounding surface. So if you have bad geometry around a hole and it tries to fill it, you're just going to get a bad fill. So it is very important that you use any of these local smoothness options, any mesh reduction options. And even if you have a hole that has some bad geometry around it, go in there and manually cut out information around it so that you're giving it the best chance to succeed. So let's go to the next section. And this is basically the end of the mesh prep wizard. Now, there is an option here to automatically launch the surface wizard, but it's been my experience that it's a very good idea at this point to deselect that option, hit OK, and to save this file. Now, all that work that you did in prepping the mesh, if you automatically jump into the surface prep wizard, and let's say for some reason SOLIDWORKS crashes or you do something that you can't undo, or, you know, you make a mistake somewhere along the line, whatever could happen, I mean, anything could happen. If you don't hop out and save the file, you're going to lose all of that information, all the prep that you did on the mesh. So it's a very good idea. And I've done this before and I've skipped the steps before and it's bit me. So I always recommend that you deselect that option, you hop out, you save your file if you're happy with the mesh that you've created. Now remember that we're modifying the mesh within our SOLIDWORKS file. We're not actually doing anything to that PLY file. So at any point in time, if you want to do this again, you can open that PLY file again and you can manipulate it again and see if you can get a different result and work with it. But for us, I'm going to go ahead and save this and that's going to be the end of this video. So hopefully you join us in the next video where we talk a little bit more about the next few things that we can do with this mesh. As always, if you guys have any questions, please email solidworksupport at mlc-cad.com, and we'll see you next time.